Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today I want to talk a bit about some things I did before taking my shahada that I found very beneficial and looking back at it I'm very glad that I did things in this way and also these are things I advise people who come to me and ask questions about taking their shahada and how you know how is it like converting and suddenly going from one life to you know another life in a sense so yeah so the first thing I did when I started researching Islam was actually telling my parents and my family. It gave me some comfort, some relief, knowing that they were kind of kept in the loop. Like, I was like updating them, I guess. Um, of course, this is very dependent on every person's situation, if what their relationship with their family uh, is like. But for me, I felt the best was to be upfront in case I would convert. I wasn't planning on it, but I was just thinking of all the possible uh, uh, results of my research uh, into Islam. So that was very helpful when the day came and I realized that I wanted to convert. It wasn't as scary as I can imagine telling someone or telling your close family and friends that you are suddenly a Muslim or that you want to convert tomorrow, you know, uh, if they haven't known anything at all about it uh, beforehand. So when I actually told my parents, it took some time before I kind of, I made a lot of dua, I prayed a lot to, for strength to finally like tell my parents that I want to convert. Um, but once I actually did, it wasn't, I think actually my mom told me, because she had told my siblings that my brother was like, yeah, we kind of saw it coming. And that was, you know, less, a bit less nerve wracking than it is. So it was really helpful. And I always advise sisters I talk with who have converted or they want to convert that they should be as open and honest as they can uh, in their situation. Also make sure that you do some <laughs> like extra research if that makes sense when and if you tell your family or friends because they might have questions they want to ask and you want to feel prepared and you want to feel secure with your answers there's no shame in you know telling your family member or friend that you know what i want to do some more research on this specific topic or question that they might have you know asked about instead of giving them an answer that you're not really sure is correct you don't want to mislead and you also want to seem or prove that you are confident in in your choice, in your uh, choice to convert. But again, we can't know everything from, from day one. So just do your research and be humble enough and just say that I'm going to come back to you with this one. The second thing that I did that was very helpful was uh, as I was learning about Islam, I also started changing out some um, clothing items in my wardrobe to cover a bit more like I said in my hijab video, I believe it was, I started, you know, uh, using like longer cardigans, uh, trying to like stopping, stop using t-shirts and things like that. Of course, again, all of these points really depend on the situation someone's in. But if you have the finances to just buy one extra clothing piece that might cover a bit more that you feel more comfortable in, uh, that would be very great. If not, Obviously, you know, use what you have, what you can, and, you know, just do your best. And the same goes for food. Uh, start researching around the area where you live. Are there halal uh, options that you can buy, that you can choose, so that when the day comes where you kind of finally become a Muslim, <clears throat> or like officially become Muslim, you don't have to like stress about the food or, or the clothes, because you have, you know, prepared a bit and the halal food could be halal friendly even though you know, I live in Norway there's not we don't find halal stamped food uh, much around here so it's more so reading the ingredients just learning bit by bit what kind of ingredients could be for example gelatin but also <laughs> you know finding those actual halal imported maybe uh, meats uh, alternatives where you can find that where you can uh, purchase that I'm not sure if she's like showing on the, on the screen <laughs> the
The third is also really depending on... <laughs> sorry, Luna. The third is also depending, again, on your situation, where you live, uh, whether there are Muslims around you, but find a community, a Muslim community, a sisterhood, if you're a sister. Um, to me, obviously, there was none, but I knew my in-laws. But also, I I created an anonymous uh, in Instagram account, which is my rewrite journey diary today, and not anonymous anymore. But I started out with that one just to connect with like-minded people and even though again you know it's not physically here it's all online it did help to feel a sense of community a belonging because you might not feel that way otherwise and don't be shy to contact sisters you see online that maybe you followed because you'd be interested in what they post contact them you know start a conversation with them uh, text me, you know, on Instagram, if you're a sister. Um, I'm happy to, you know, talk and connect with uh, fellow sisters, honestly. And it's really important because it is very easy to feel, to feel isolated, to feel lonely uh, once you convert or revert, once you've taken your shahada. And again, depending where you live, there might not be a Muslim community uh, around you. The fourth one is also the most important one I would say and that is start learning the prayer, the five daily prayers, the obligatory ones in Arabic and I know that this is where a lot of reverts struggle because Arabic is most likely not our first language and it is a difficult language to learn but it is super super important to learn it in Arabic because your salat, your five daily ob obligatory prayers are not valid if they're not in Arabic and if they don't contain the Al-Fatiha, the first surah of the Quran. Alhamdulillah, I was able to attend a crash course uh, of like learning how to pray uh, before I converted uh, because that was available where I lived at the, at the time. I know that's not the case for everyone, but make sure to learn uh, surah Al-Fatiha because every prayer has that surah. You have to know that surah in Arabic and I know there are different opinions about the rest of the prayers but majority say that it has to be in Arabic because your prayer is reciting the Quran and reciting the Quran means to recite it and the Quran is only Quran if it is in Arabic. I will put some links down below in the description box thingy uh, of videos that I use to uh, memorize uh, Al-Fatiha especially. I hope you know, these are YouTube links, so it's out there for everyone. I believe they're still available. I always send these links to people who ask me for help regarding prayer. And I'm also sure there are lots of how to pray videos out there as well. And five, the last one is, and this is actually something I didn't do, but don't overwhelm yourself. I would say focus a lot on the prayer parts. There are a lot of things that has to change, that will change when you convert, but the prayer is really, really important to implement. And don't let anyone tell you that you can't pray your prayers before it's perfect, quote unquote perfect. If you struggle with the Arabic, still pray it, still recite it in Arabic, even if you have horrible pronunciation, continue to do it. You have to do it five times a day either way, so you will get a lot of practice in, but don't think that you can't pray it just because uh, it's not perfect. Yeah. Also, I think you can add, uh, you know, the, there's a hadith or like, you know, the one who struggles reading yeah. the Quran, you can also add that like, yeah. on the screen. And also there is a hadith uh, that says, I'm not, don't directly quote me here, um, there's a bigger reward for those who struggle with their recitation compared to those who recite it perfectly. But yes, don't overwhelm yourself, go at your own pace. If you feel like you can do more, sure, go ahead. But don't think that, you know, Rome wasn't built in one day. It can be very discouraging taking on so much that you want to do at day one. I remember feeling that way. I wanted to learn everything at the same time, like just learn everything and be like, you know, perfect Muslim or whatever. But <clears throat> it will, at the end, you know, you will feel burned out it will feel very 
stressful and overwhelming more than it already is. So, you know, go at your own pace, baby steps, you know yourself the best and don't underestimate the the mercy of Allah and the that he's the most forgiving. We tend to like fearing Allah is good, but don't fear that he can't forgive you. He literally says that he's the most forgiving. So don't underestimate that. Thank you guys for watching. I hope it was informative. I hope it maybe answered some of your questions. Again, I do. I didn't want to make this video because I have been getting these questions and these are the general advice that I have, you know, used myself that I found very beneficial. So I hope it was good. I hope it was informative and I hope you have a great day. Bye.